Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. And in today's video, we're doing a bit of a sculpt over. Mm. So this is kind of like uh, similar to what we did with the dark side uh, sculpt a while back. And so this, this sculpt was uh, donated graciously by <laughs> Vincent on our Discord. And he had a bunch of questions specifically about the triceps and the traps, how to improve his sculpt. So we thought we'd make a video out of it to just sort of give everyone a view of like what we would do to fix this. Yeah. It's one of these where if you were to look at the before and after, it's incredibly hard to to really see... Well, it's incredibly hard to really see how you can improve the before. But once you see the after, yeah. then you can clearly tell what's what's improving here. Because Vincent has... I mean, he has everything in there. Yeah. Um, there are just... It's mostly... When you get to this stage... So Vincent, he he's, he's at a good stage now yeah. where he's got most of his muscle blocked down. But the issue that he runs into is that we're missing the sort of skin on top. We're missing some a more natural feel to the muscles. Yeah. They're very round, very bulbous, as I told him. Um, so it's kind of like fat muscles. Mm. So it's just about going in there and trimming them down a little bit and, and trying to fix, uh, fix the insertions uh, just to get everything to look more correct. Like there's actually a lot of smooth brush yeah. in this video. Um, which is which is quite interesting. Me too, yeah, because we talked about that in a, in a video which we do made some time ago. Now we we're talking about how to sculpt without using a smooth brush at all, and like that's still my preferred way of doing it. Mm. But I use a smooth brush whenever I need to like destroy the form, and I don't mean in like oh tear it all down. No. It's just if you want to simplify it down completely, and yeah. you just want to rebuild like the area, like Morton is doing here, is rebuilding um, like the deltoids and then like um, the triceps as well. Smoothing it off and then just rebuilding it there is actually a really good way of doing it. Yeah, the, the main issue with the rear delt here was it sort of looked like it uh, it inserted or terminated. I, I can't remember where things insert and terminate. <laughs> but yeah. um, it was sort of like in the tricep instead of on the humerus. So like, you know, the, all the, the, the heads of the, the delts sort of converge to, to one mm. single point. Um, and the, the tricep is a big area here, um, which I've seen a lot. There was actually another guy on a Discord that posted right after Vincent posted this with the same issues on mm. his triceps, where I think people view the triceps as... it's they, People primarily view it as two muscles, and then they just split it in the middle. Mm. Whereas you have the long head here that we're working on now sort of has two heads to it. There's there's a smaller head underneath that one. Yeah. Um, so it's, and that's a more distinct shape. Triceps for, for three heads. <laughs> yeah. One thing I, I like to think about when doing triceps is in between the two heads, you have this sort of horseshoe um, mm. ring going uh, going around. That That's sort of where the muscles, they meet. Mm. Instead of having a sharp cut into it. That just makes it a little more, it just makes it feel more natural. Yeah. So a lot of stuff when it comes to this to 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 go from what the before and after here is really simplifying stuff down. It's yeah. not about adding detail. Like if you were to look at uh, the, the actual end result here compared to the before, it's it's far less detailed. Yeah, it's just a lot simpler. It's a lot softer. That's really what realism is about. And we've been talking about this before as well. Like actually looking at scans. And we had some people ask us, "What is a scan? <laughs> like is it a software?" No, we mean actual three D scans of people. There is yeah. a fantastic resource called three D Scanster dot com, which is is really good for actually getting scans of them. Because then you can see the real volume which is happening. Not some artist interpretation from the 1500s or like a photo where you have tons of shading on it. It's all just what actual forms you have. Yeah. And one thing I, I want to point out here is that uh, I'm, I'm not doing this off of memory. No. Like at all. Uh, I have a bunch of reference on my other monitor um, of the delts, of the triceps, everything. So... It's, it's not like, uh, oh, okay, you get better and you can just do it out of your head. I mean, maybe no. some people can, but I can't. Yeah. So reference just really helps me to make it make sure that it stays grounded. Yeah. Because otherwise, I think you run into the issue of doing exactly what I'm doing right now. is sort of like the ecroche kind of thing. Yeah. Because you want to get the muscle striations in there. But the reality is, even with a bodybuilder, it's only the day of the competition that a mm. bodybuilder is that mega shredded because they, you know they have a deficit of water. Their body yeah. fat percent is like four or five percent, um, and they're flexing. And they're flexing. That yeah, very important. Like this guy here in this 
pose shouldn't be flexing. No. You can do that afterwards, you know, and, and exaggerate the muscles, but yeah. not right now. Problem is, if you're flexing this guy here, once that you can't really go the other way. Like you, you this is the neutral stage. Mm. If you want to have the neutral be well neutral, yeah, and then you can do a flex version of it. So like a uh, little more thing as well with reference, super important. Like we actually have an anatomy guy on our desk here. <laughs> like one of these like. Uh, uh, like an, from Anatomy Tools, it's it's one of the, I bought it like ten years ago. It's based <laughs> off an old cast or something. You also have them for three D total. I mm. highly recommend getting one of those. Yeah, because you can look at all the anatomy books you want, which is useful. You should do that, but they don't really talk about volume. No, it's really hard to get volume from a two D representation. Yeah. Um, as as reference, I'm also using um pre previous sculpts I've done mm. or base meshes that I have that I've sculpted up and you know based on scans or any kind of reference that I found so it's it's a lot of different kind of reference oh this is actually an important one I want to talk about um sort of the infraspinatus and the terrace major because mm. uh, this is also a, something I see a lot is that that becomes a very round very yeah. fat shape um it actually just you don't I mean you you have to be seriously lean and ripped in order to get striation yeah. uh, in the infraspinatus and the teres major. But there's still volumes there, but I simplify them into two sort of larger volumes. Yeah. And I think that that makes it look more natural. And the, the forearm we're not really going to focus on a lot. It's just to it's just to get it to flow into the triceps a little better. Mm. So we're not going to go super into because that could be a video and just by itself. Yeah, it could be a three hour chapter by itself. <laughs> exactly. The form is such a hard part. My hardest, my, my biggest issue when it comes to sculpting is uh, the, the back and the shoulder area and the forearm. Mm. The reason is because they're so dynamic. Yeah. Like if you look at something like like the leg or like the, the general thigh region, you don't really do a whole lot with it. You move your 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 foot up and down essentially. But something like uh, the forearm is rotating like crazy, and particularly the shoulder region is just going. The moment you move your arms, the shoulders go insane. <laughs> That's why if you're sculpting in a pose like this, the back will only look like this. Yes. And then a few degrees, but because everything is moving and sliding around, it can change quite dynamically. Yeah. And yeah. that, that right there is just, just as a quick note, is sort of where it your traps change direction. Mm. So that's where they attach to the sort of like the spike or the edge of the spine of the scapula. Mm. Um, it's just like a it's like a half wheel or something you can get in there just to get a little more soft because that's I think that's another common issue that people tend to cut in mm. and they make the the spine of the scapula uh, be a very sharp edge. But in, in reality, you have fat and skin and muscle there. So it, it tends to smooth it out a bit more. Yeah. I think that is the single biggest thing people can do to improve their sculpt, at least at this level, mm. is like obviously Vincent here is a, is a very capable sculptor. But uh, at this point here, we're not talking about proportion no, or no, like, no. like the skeleton. We're talking about how do you take this sculpt and may improve it. And I think the single biggest thing you can do at this point is simplify stuff down and add skin to it. It's crazy how big of a difference That's it does. such a big one. Otherwise, it's just not going to look natural. You can add all the the wrinkles and striation, all that, but people don't have that. Yeah. Like, even if you're doing like a stylist or like a creature or something like that, you just need to simplify stuff down and, and add skin on top of it. Yeah. I like to think about it as a slider, like almost like you are an RPG and it's from, you're talking like, uh, like bone length. From low to high, where it essentially determines <laughs> the height of it. Talking about the muscularity, like how muscular are you from low to high? And then I'm also talking about the skill and elasticity here. Like a newborn baby would be at zero. It would be like the the most elastic thing in the world. And then you would you would have like a hundred year old woman who um who would have like it would just be flopping around. Mm. And I'm, I kind of like to think about like where are you on this slider here? Yeah. Um, just straight up going into like Skyrim territory here, <laughs> just been skin sliding. So this guy here, he's probably like maybe like three out of out of ten. Like he's a fairly young guy. So so there's definitely some some skin which you'll see. Like it will actually it will deform based mm. on how he is. But it's not just going to be super smooth, and it's not just going to be saggy. So just really really think about the skin, how it deforms. Yeah, and you can see there on on now I blocked in the 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 delt and accentuated the triceps and that lay that that left me with a very sort of hard cut mm. and you don't want that that's that's exactly when your your model starts to look like an accroche sculpt yeah I mean, unless you're doing that yeah. um, or like just crazy superhero ripped that, yeah. that could work for you 
Oh, this was actually a good point here as well in um, in terms of the traps, the separation of the traps. So mm. there there are there are tr- there are three uh, sort of fibers that run along the traps. Uh, you are most likely not really going to see the separation in the traps. Sometimes when when really big bodybuilders and they shrug, you know, you 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 can get like these sort of like two shelves of traps that mm. lie on top of each other. Um, so that might be a look that you're going for. I know that that uh, Vincent was using a sculpt from Tom Newbury. It was a really cool sculpt, actually, that, that had that sort of look to it. Um, but with the model that I was doing here, I don't know. I, I felt like I just wanted a more smooth trap. Yeah. So and that's the thing. There's so much variation. I can't stress this enough. That, like, you, you can, if you were to replicate this like one-to-one, you know, I guarantee you there's like 10 people that go, oh, that's not what the traps look like. Mm. Because I, I looked at the traps here and they look like this, but they look different on every single person. Yeah. There's general guidelines, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to like generalize it here, but you can't just do everything the same. No, like when it comes to anatomy, you need to have a solid base, which is which you know is mostly the same as a base here. But when it comes to making it look believable, mm. you gotta look at individual specific pieces of reference. For for if you're doing a bodybuilder, like what is a bodybuilder? A bodybuilder is just it's just a, a man or a woman who is super ripped with <laughs> really low body fat. Yeah. Like, there isn't a bodybuilder body. Like, they are all different. Like, mm. if you were to look at their abs, some would have, like, a six-pack and an eight. Some would have, like, 16-pack. Like, it's all just... <laughs> yeah. It's all individual. Because people are... I mean, people are crazy individual. Yeah. And you oftentimes see stuff in real photos, which is... Which it just looks wrong. Yeah, like straight up contradicts what you just saw in your anatomy book. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's, that's actually a reason why I don't like to use anatomy references too much. Mm. Because anatomy references, uh, although they also tend to generalize, they give you that very sharp picture of exactly when does a muscle end and where does it begin. Yeah. But it doesn't take the surface anatomy sort of into account with, with no. the skin and the fat. That's what reference images gives you. And I think that goes back to one of the talks we had um, some time ago about observation, like mm. how important observation really is. Because yeah. um, if you just look at an anatomy book and you start sculpting, you'll end up with something that doesn't look very natural. Yeah, you'll end up with something that looks straight up and out of an anatomy book, <laughs> yeah. which are often like maybe they're uh, they might be like 100 years old and based on like carcasses or something mm, like that, mm. or they're sure as hell not based on living people. <laughs> an X. Yeah, I just did a giant X there because um, just to remind myself uh, that the fibers of the chest, you have like well, you have four, three, four? Is yeah. it four different fibers? One, two, three, four. I think you have four. Uh-huh. Like there's a lower chest one. But um, the the clavicular part, you know, goes from the start of the clavicle and on to the humerus. And then you have the sternal part which goes across. I see oftentimes people that do a, a chest that where the fibers go only across the chest, mm. um, but you have variation. There are some angles in there, so you gotta tilt those. And we're not focusing too much on the front of, of the of this guy, just because the majority is is the back. There'll be a little bit of um, like form adjustment just to make the back look a little nicer. Mm. So that that's just what we're doing now. What Morton is adding here as well is one of the most important muscles when it comes to structure, the sternocleidomastoid. Mm. This is also, this is so important because this adds structure to anything. If you want to make somebody feel super ripped and strong, you give yeah. them massive sternocleidomastoids. That's like the whole cast, like the biggest ones <laughs> in the world. Even if you're doing like a feminine, like a really feminine sculpt, mm. you still want sternocleidomastoids in there. You just make them elegant. So this is where like anatomy names are go a bit go a bit like off the rails here. So sternocleidomastoid sounds it just sounds like a mouthful, and, and there isn't really like one way to describe names in if it comes to that. It's because it's, it attaches that at the sternum, the clavicle, and the mastoid process. The mastoid process, the point Morton just added behind the ear, yeah. and this is a little notch there. So that's why it's called that crazy thing here. <laughs> Some stuff is called like biceps because it has two heads. Other things is called it based on the person who discovered it. And like, you know, who knows, right? <laughs> the, Some ancient star. Yeah, yeah. The traps are called it because it looks like a trapezoid. Like it, it, it's just all over the place here. This is actually one of my sort of most fun anatomy facts. The the separation from the the pecs and the deltoids. In right in there you have like this little triangle of mm. just nothingness. There's just a hole in mm. there. 
Um, it gets covered by skin. So, you know, again, if you're not considering skin, you'll have a really deep <laughs> hole in there. Once you put skin on top, it sort of evens it out a little bit more. Skin is kind of like, the way I like to think about it is, is it's kind of like you, you just made some food and now you're just wrapping it in a cellophane. Just like this plastic cover you're adding on top of it. It just kind of smooths everything out. Yeah. It just means that all the, the, the details, they just kind of disappear. And by details, I mean like the striation. All that. You obviously have detail in the skin, like mm. pores and all that. And like actual big wrinkles in the skin. But in terms of striation and all the... And just all the big differences yeah. it is mostly just re- removed by, by adding the skin cellophane <laughs> on the top of the accuracy. I could also, as a note about the tool, it's uh, I'm exclusively using the clay buildup and the smooth brush. Mm. And I'm using the clay buildup without an alpha because I'm doing super soft forms. Yeah. Like muscles or whatever it is, even with striation, it's super soft form. Yeah, it is. So I get a really nice look but more importantly i get skin variation like mm. i get just subtle or you can see that on the back here yeah there's there's hints of striation in there now just because i i went along the the muscle fibers yeah the the i think the the tendency is also what we talked about with the smooth thing in a in a previous video is like don't ever use smooth brush but it's like it's the overuse of a yeah. smooth brush you will never have a super smooth back there no. there's always going to be some undulation some fibers are lower and higher um, and then you, again, just adds to how natural it's gonna look. And also the whole smooth brush thing as well. Like we got some people. Oh, that's a stupid rule. <laughs> it's not a rule. <laughs> there are no rules here. Like there is no CG prison no. unless you use triangles. Oh yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. <laughs> but uh, like yeah, there is no. You're fine. It's all just a tool. Yeah. Uh, smooth brush is fantastic if you either like the way I'm using it, which is re- like kill the form, or you know if you're using it in a more subtle way. So now you can see the differences <laughs> here between the two. It just feels more natural. Yeah, and I mean, if you were to look at this, they could it could be mistaken for the fact that I've just just used the smooth brush. Yeah, which I mean, I think is like the majority of this, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be honest. But there's still some some proportion changes and and shape changes that I wanted to do. So yeah, yeah the way I, the way I'm, I, I would approach this the same way you've been doing, which is smooth everything out, <laughs> get a clean base, yeah, and then go over with like low intensity clay clay build up with no alpha. Yeah, because what what we talked about with the whole no smooth brush thing is isn't no smooth brush it is refine the shape as you go along as well like i'm never i don't have a stage which is sculpting smooth sculpting smooth it's all just form yeah. create form at all times and now now i'm doing the ecrochet thing this mm. is just to illustrate where your triceps go yeah. uh, your forearm it's it's really tricky yeah like once you have is. this point here i think is for me is the most difficult part of the entire body where the biceps meet and the forearm is so and the tricep. triceps. What's the what's the muscle in between the biceps uh, and the tricep? Brachialis. That's the yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. One. Tricky little thing. Yeah. So that one we should, I think you should be careful with. It's not something that you really see a lot. No. It kind of tends to blend in between the bicep and the tricep. So I've exaggerated it a little bit here, but I think I'm going to go in and, and smooth it out. So the brachialis, that's the muscle nobody knows about. Everyone knows <laughs> about the, the tricep and then the bicep. Yeah. And the forearm, no, so the upper arm is essentially two, two muscles. It is the bicep and the tricep, but then you have the brachialis in between, yeah. which nobody really thinks about. And like Martin says, you're not really going to s- see it a whole lot. You're not like nobody's going to flex their brachialis here, <laughs> but it's mostly just a muscle for stability. And it helps you with the puzzle of anatomy. Yes. Like if you, if you don't consider it, then either your, your uh, I think it's the lateral head of your tricep mm. or your bicep is going to be too thick. Yeah. Um, it yes. really helps to balance out the look of, of those two muscles. Yeah, I mean, how like it's it's like the th- it's like a third of the arm almost. <laughs> like it's a massive one. It so. is actually a massive, massive muscle because it yeah. goes beneath. Um, I think it lies. It lies. Yeah, it lies beneath the biceps. Yeah. It's actually a big uh, muscle belly. Yeah, there. it is. And then you have the forearm where everything just goes off the rails. <laughs> like in the upper arm, bicep, tricep, brachialis, and then the the, the lower arm, the forearm. <sighs> that is just hard. One of the reasons why it's so hard is because. When you are rotating your wrist, it's not like a ball joint. It, there are two bones, the radius and the ulna, which just twist. Yeah. And when you twist them, everything just goes crazy. That's a terrible invention. I yeah. mean, so it's pretty great, actually. Yeah. But, uh, this is really hard to sculpt. No, for sculpting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it's, it, forearm is a tricky one. So, uh, you know, we'll probably save that for a later yeah. thing. Just on its own. Honestly, when, I, when I'm sculpting the forearm, I need reference for this. I need photographic reference. I, mm. need, I need a mirror just to look at myself. I just yeah. keep touching my own arm for that. 
because uh, it's tricky and you want to get that right. Yeah. When I'm blocking stuff out, I'm also doing the same thing Morton is doing here, was, was doing here with the with the triceps here, and just carve it in. Like, mm -hmm. damn standard brush, just carve it in, but then you got to break it up. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I drew it out as a reference, like a mental note for myself, yeah. and then I went in and undid, uh, because it was too aggressive, yeah. but also just to show you guys where the muscles lie. Uh, but it's more like a mental note. Yeah. Um, Goddamn secret. <laughs> <laughs> but an important part here that um, that was missing in the sculpt was actually the spinal erectors. Mm. So the spinal erectors go on either side of your spine and actually go all the way up your yeah. spine. And they tend to protrude out a lot more towards the, the your pelvis. They're super important. I mean, they're essentially what gives you proper stability in the back. Yeah. It's kind of like having two, like you have like a, it's like a super soft jelly thing and now you're just putting two sticks in it <laughs> now you're just giving it stability yeah and every muscle has a purpose as well like turns out evolution is pretty smart and it's not just going to waste energy and complexity to just create muscle every single muscle has a purpose to it which could be like like the, looking at the, the back here it's kind of hard to figure out like why do we have muscles on the scapula? Like, they can be tricky because, <laughs> yeah. like, they don't really... Like, the bicep is very clear what it's doing. Like, yeah. it moves the forearm up, so it means you can do stuff on that. But then you have, like, muscles like like the infraspinatus, teres major, and teres minor. And that's kind of like to rotate the arm and mm. to provide stability to it. It's tricky stuff. Yeah. And it's like, you don't need to know the functionality of all no. the muscles. No. I think for certain muscles, it definitely helps yeah. because then you know how it'll behave if it's contracted. Yeah. Yeah, it's also like an interesting thing with should you learn the names of the muscles or not? Well, that depends. I've been working with the people who are absolutely fantastic sculptors who don't know any of the names. <laughs> They're like, oh, you mean the, the pectoralis? Oh, yeah, there was stuff on the chest. Yeah. But they can sculpt it. Yeah. Ultimately, what's important is do you know the form of it? Like, mm -hmm. do you know that it's there? And you know the and and can you sculpt the shape of it? If you know the name of it, mm. that is a plus because that also means we have a common language for it now. If you're like, oh, the rear held head of the deltoid, if I say that, Morton will know what I mean. Yeah. Instead of our ah, oh, the part which is on the back of the deltoid, or even the deltoid, or do you mean the shoulder muscle? Yeah. Which shoulder muscle? So it's kind of like. Um, the way I like to think about it is kind of like a, like a map, like a like a city where you're talking about street names. Can you live in a city without knowing any street names? Sure. Does it help you if you want to find directions? Oh yeah. <laughs> so, but it's like, but it's it's more important to know what the street names, what the streets are there for, mm. instead of just memorizing street names. It's more important to know why are you there? Uh, yeah. Why are you in that part of the city? Yeah. I think an uh, interesting note. I was just thinking about this for the infraspinatus, which is muscle that's on top of your scapular mm. and the teres major which is below, like this yeah. little balloon muscle below. That what gives those volume, is sure, you can work them out, but like working out your infraspinatus is, uh, I, uh, who even knows how to do that? The, but uh, your traps next to it, mm. sort of like as that gains volume and you build it up, that can sort of push on the other muscles mm. and also just by contrast, make it look bigger. Um, and that's why you don't want to like make them too round or too big mm. because then you end up with that inflated strange look. The way I remember like which is on top of is it Terrace Major is Infraspinatus on top it's kind of like just looking at um, the names of them. Mm. So Infraspinatus inferior to the spine inferior to the spine of the scapula just like um, that's how some things are named is it a posterior, anterior whatever it is. So inferior just means below. Mm. No, oh, nipples. <laughs> That's oh, actually a really good point. Yeah. Um, nipples are super important. Uh, if you don't have nipples on your chest, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> Probably. Um, you should get that checked out. But <laughs> um, it just gave shape to mm. your chest. It's like if you didn't have eyes on your face. Yeah. It's really. It's it's so like we're so ingrained to looking at a chest with yeah. a nipple, like you you know what a nipple chest looks like because yeah. that's what it looks like and if you don't have it it can be really hard to get the look right it's like if you yeah. don't have eyebrows like yeah. people without eyebrows when you're sculpting in the beginning it just looks kind of off yeah so if you are a person who have no eyebrows or have no nipples for medical reasons we do not mean any offense because <laughs> <laughs> we know there are people out there who have that it's purely from a sculpture point yeah, of view yeah, here yeah. that that it if you want something to feel just to feel like a regular 
sculpture, mm. it, it would just look a bit weird yeah. without that. And here, it's like, I think, looking at while well, sculpting here, I've probably toned down the um, the infraspinatus a little bit, mm. but eh, what are you going to do? <laughs> I always find it's good to just exaggerate a little bit. Yeah. Just because you're always going over everything when you're adding skin and you yeah, get feedback yeah. and it's always like, ah, oh, tone it down. So I always just exaggerate stuff a little bit. Yeah. Again, spinal rectors, super mm. important. Yeah. They really help um, give some nice volume to the back. Because you don't have, let's like, see, that was uh, another thing I spotted with the sculpt was the was the lats in the beginning mm. so the lats sort of go from underneath your arm <laughs> and then uh, they terminate down actually on the on your pelvis there's like a sheet of fiber mm. that terminates down there no the fascia yeah but the muscle doesn't go all the way down mm. there which was one of the issues with this sculpt was that the muscle fibers actually appear to go all the way down there mm. uh, but they actually terminate quite high up you can kind of see there where maybe a little below the spinal erectors there, that's probably where the muscle fibers would terminate. Yeah, right around there. So that's also like a thing here as well, like muscles don't really connect directly to bones. Mm. They connect through fascia. Fascia is just like a fancy word for connecting material. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... It's like tape. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a really good way of putting it. It's like you just want to have something in between the muscle. Because um, muscles aren't strong enough to sort of attach themselves to bone. Mm. They need something to latch onto. So it's just like a binding agent between yeah. the, the bone and the muscle. Yeah. And if you don't know that, your anatomy is going to be a bit funky. Yeah. For instance, if you if you look at like uh, generally like the, the rear deltoid, like the one which connects to the, to the scapula, that also has a lot of fascia to it. But it's really easy just to connect everything directly. So a lot of stuff just, a lot of muscles really just have a lot of fascia which just yeah. connects to it. Oh, I just realized I lied. Oh, I'm yeah? also using the move topological brush apparently. Jesus, stop lying all the time. And in these brush, and I don't because I don't use hotkeys. I just use default C brush. Mm -hmm. And C brush in 2018 changed uh, the move brush from BMV <laughs> to BMB, I think it is. So now move topological is now my <laughs> move brush. So that's just confusing. Oh me. no. Luckily Kills not. performance. <laughs> not an issue on this one. No. Actually, that was just a quick note. I don't know if we mentioned that in the beginning. Uh, the first thing I did with the sculpt was to dynamesh it. Mm. Because it was just, it was too high res. Yeah. It was super high res to get the cuts in the muscles, which might yeah. be needed if you're doing an accroche sculpt. For, but for this kind of anatomy, I would really recommend that you work on something that's lower res to begin with. Yeah. Because, I mean, you can see I can get all the forms I want in here. And this is a... Yeah, and I can see it's three million versus sixty nine thousand um, <laughs> yeah. points, right? So, and it just feels more natural. Yeah, and you you can see because of the the, the sculpting process you that I that I'm doing here, I do end up with this undulation on the skin, mm. and you might want to tone that down a little bit. You know, go over some areas and and smooth them out a little bit. But it can really help to give a more natural feel to your skin. Yeah, like that's what Henny mentioned as well. If you look at a scan. Your body is just one giant ocean of like tiny bumps everywhere. Yeah. That's really what what sells a nice sort of skin look. Yeah, when it comes to like muscles, everyone keeps making muscles. We we just said before exaggerating a bit, but people exaggerate not not necessarily the volume, but the definition between them. Like how you you really can't tell a lot of definition on regular people. Even if if this was a bodybuilder standing like this, you really wouldn't be able to tell a lot of different muscles unless he was on his dehydrated day and he was flexing <laughs> yeah it would just be like general big volume so i would say in general big volumes are far more important than specific mm. muscles muscle fibers it's important to know where they are yeah but then but use that as like step three out of four which which is the line where the last step really is add skin and weight to it yeah I don't know, I, I went a little rogue on the butt for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why I even touched that. But <laughs> I just wanted to smooth it out a little bit. <laughs> mm. But this is also like like half an hour of just sculpting on it. Like yeah. This here, you, like you don't need a lot to refine this. Like the original sculptor probably took way longer than, than your little sculpt over here. Yeah. And it's so... It it's much easier to fix something that already has nice proportions yeah. than to make it from the beginning. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, if I was sculpting this as well myself from scratch, I would still do the same thing Vincent was doing, just block it in, yeah. harsh, big shapes here. 
but then it's the stage here. Yeah. And, and again, this is why we want to do the video here, because it's so tricky to to look at the, the original sculpt and be like, how can I improve this? Mm. Especially if you don't know. Um, I think that's just that's the hard part. Yeah. It's just it's just a lot of practice. Yeah. Um, and look at a lot of real world reference. Yeah. I wouldn't really I really wouldn't get too attached to anatomy books. They're really good for reference. They're really good for the shape of the muscle underneath the skin and the name of the muscle and the name of the muscle but as a general note you know i would use real life reference as the primary reference yeah so use yourself go to the gym <laughs> go to the gym yeah <laughs> take spend five years becoming a bodybuilder <laughs> if you can use yourself as reference but yeah this is just like the final pass here is just smoothing out a few things adding a, a again more skin layer on top for some things yeah so just some final tweaks. And then there's all this refinement. Like if you were to work on this for like a few more, you could easily spend it like a day more yeah, on this. Yeah. Just on the back. <laughs> yeah, just on the back. And then what you were doing is going between muscle definition, like adding like the bone definition, like the seventh cervical vertebra, which you're just hinting at here. Yeah. Skin, muscle, and bone, and just going back and forth between them. It's a very non-linear process yeah. for me. Yeah, it just takes a lot of time. Yeah. So don't get frustrated with yourself. If uh, you can't get it to look right the first time, this takes years to learn and it takes an eternity to master, I guess. Yeah. So. Yeah, so we really hope you learned a lot from this. Mm, yeah, it's. Uh, we'd like to do more of these videos in the future if you find some sculpts that we think we could uh, we could tweak a little bit here mm. and there. So maybe from even earlier in the stage or later in the stage, if there are more specific things. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. Mm, thank you.